Good morning, David Kern here with the CBS AM debrief. It's Tuesday the 26th of July and uh, overnight market action saw most of the major global indices uh, down. Concerns remain about the US debt ceiling uh, impasse between uh, the Republicans and the Democrats and uh, that at this stage looks uh, like it's uh, still not going to be resolved anytime soon. But in the meantime, market focus seems to shift, seems to have shifted from concerns about whether or not the, uh, there will be a default and uh, more to the possibility that the US AAA debt rating will be downgraded to AA and what that will mean uh, globally. So uh, that's the focus here. Now we have had uh, some technical difficulties here this morning and consequently we're running behind schedule and in fact the local market has already opened uh, and it's actually opened up quite uh, quite reasonably here after what was a pretty uh, poor showing yesterday down 72.5 points. At the moment though we're uh, up uh, 22 on the SPY and the actual index is hasn't been refreshed here yet. We'll just go over here to have a look here at the figures on the cash index. And we're up 0.7 of a percent here. So just have a look at the rest of the figures here. All of the Americas were down overnight, uh, including the Dow at 0.7, the S&P 500 at 0.56. In Europe, the only uh, positive was the DAX. Uh, the rest were all down in uh, uh, 1 to 2 percent. And of course, yesterday, as I've just touched on, uh, we had quite a solid sell-off here. And so the SPY was pointing up here this morning. It continues to see the uh, follow-through here with some buying going on. So. Uh, it, it strikes me that we are getting buyers coming in, seeing that the market's looking like reasonably good value back at this uh, mid 4,000 index level, which is uh, is quite well supported. And perhaps the view is coming through that we will see this issue resolved uh, one way or the other, and that we've uh, we've perhaps just got to get on with uh, with the business of uh, of the commodity of the equity markets here, and uh, wanting to uh, be a part of it rather than uh, completely sitting on the fence and uh, uh, not uh, having any exposure there to uh, any upsides, because I guess the uh, logical conclusion is and this is the uh, logical assumption is that this problem will be resolved, and then we uh, we might see a situation where it's not truly really back to the races and uh, we get surprised by a, a move uh, up because we've had this uh, uh, pent up uh, downside pressure here and a lot of this uh, potential bad news is already priced into the market. Anyway, uh, we'll see what uh, eventuates there. So uh, let's uh, take a look at the commodity space. We've touched on the indices. Uh, we'll take a quick look here and uh, we see that uh, silver's had uh, a little bit of a move down here, just uh, 0.2, 0.4. Uh, gold at 16.14 uh, really has left that $1,600 level, uh, which I thought might uh, present some uh, uh, grounds for consolidation, but uh, that certainly proved not to be the case. We had a little uh, cannon action there. It's broken through that to the upside. Uh, rough price, we've had a uh, uh, move to the downside, so I'm just going to go through the uh, the uh, up movers and then the major down movers. Uh, Coca down uh, nearly uh, three quarters of a percent. Uh, wheat down 0.65. Rough price down 0.5. Corn down 0.31. Uh, copper down 0.18 to four dollars forty per pound. Uh, crude at 99 and a, uh, one five. Natural gas uh, really is uh, testing us here. And uh, we are losing some time value on our natural gas warrant, unfortunately. We are actually uh, back underwater on that one. Okay, just uh, cover the uh, forex here because, uh, as mentioned, we have had some technical difficulties here and we're running behind schedule. Uh, okay, so the Aussie dollar 1.0845. Now, actually seeing that breaking above 
this uh, trading range that we've seen for some little time now, uh, which is around uh, just above 107. Way 107.93, so as close to uh, 108 as uh, for all practice, practical purposes. And now 108.24, so we have broken up above that uh, level that's been pretty much the top of the range, trading range since uh, well back in May. Uh, 104 is our trading range to the downside, so we may see the uh, this one to take on 110 here again, uh, which we may see a double top. And uh, that could be an opportunity to be looking at shorting the Aussie from there. Okay, I'm not really seeing any other major movers here, so I'll move on. Take a quick look at the economic calendar. Really not a lot of data here. We've had some data out of New Zealand. Uh, a little bit under expectations there for those two figures, the trade balance numbers and the, uh, uh, the dollar balance. Um, we have GDP numbers out of the UK, which may indicate if we get a surprising number to the upside that we have turned the corner there. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Then we've got consumer confidence out of the US uh, around uh, midnight tonight. That's a pretty important number. Uh, other than that, fairly quiet on that front. We've also got some uh, housing data out early tomorrow morning as well. Quick look at the uh, equities, some of the equities we follow, or I've been following. Uh, a couple of these gold stocks, Kingsgate, Medusa, St. Barbara, all doing pretty well on the back of gold prices here. Uh, GPT is holding reasonably steady here. Uh, Caltech still marking time, got out of that trade. Uh, ResMed's uh, peaked up here, it's now come back down towards all levels of support. Could consider, uh, consider that one again. Um, and that is where I might leave it. There we go. Thanks as always. And uh, happy trading today. Uh, fasten seatbelts, hold on to your hats, and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, of course, we've got that week now to the uh, deadline on that debt ceiling. Um, so it's going to be interesting to watch and see how, uh, how that all resolves itself. Okay, bye for now.